Good morning, my name is Greg Davis and I'm with CBS ArcSafe. Today we're going to show you our updated line of remote switch operators. We've got three RSAs along with an RS3 system that we're going to demonstrate and show you all. And some of the things I need to point out are this. Uh, we took and we've made the products about 22% smaller and about 40% lighter. So in, and instead of you having to take an RSO apart, to change out the AGM batteries that were inside before. It's very easy and simple now to take the M18 batteries that we use, the Milwaukee batteries, for changing out. They go in and out very easily. Now somebody's gonna ask me, because I've had this question, asked an email and I'll just address it up front. You know, why not Makita, why not DeWalt? And I've got DeWalt, Makita, and Milwaukee stuff at home. We would worked on the Milwaukee products before, with some of our RSK lineups, we're familiar with them and for ease of setup and operation, we we're just sticking with that and we're going to use those types of batteries for these systems. So just understand we've got both 120 chargers that we can get and we can get 220 chargers for international customers. So the batteries are readily available around the country and around the world for various customers. So there, we know that we can get support and get those batteries globally for our customers. Now, the first thing we're gonna work with is our RSA 54. This is on a Toshiba JK motor starter. And we're gonna use the RSO one. And I'm gonna just tilt this up to let everybody see the difference in terms of how this looks compared to the other ones that you may have seen before. Okay, we've got our on switch right here. Okay, and Brian, I just want you to be close in here. We've got our AR function. AR is what's called automatic return, and we had to have that for various actuators. If we want to move this around, we just move this to the appropriate thing. If we want it to open or operate for just the close, and we put it in the close, and we hold it down for five seconds, the light will turn green. And now it's going to be in that position, okay? If you want to turn it off and turn it back on. You're gonna see the AR is gonna come on in just the closed position right there. And I'm gonna set it right there with that. And so the AR, the actuators that require AR, it's much easier to set up, whether it's on this one or whether it's on our RSO3 for ease of operation. So I'm gonna, I don't need it for this actual actuator, so I'm gonna put it back to off, hold it down for five seconds, get the green light to come on. and then now it's set for off, okay? We've got the local and remote here for the radio remote. These are the new radio remotes right here. So we're gonna hit power on, and it's gonna show that it's paired. We've got a green light on both of these, and now I've got the radio remote I can operate. And so I'm gonna hold this up here now, let everybody watch, we're in the, let's see, let me check the position, we're in the off position, so we're gonna go close. open and that's the ease of operation with this so the other thing I need to note is this the cords and everything just to talk about the the setup and everything the cords are easier to maintain and stuff with the RSO one and if you don't purchase this with the radio remote these are now field up gradable with a CBS ArcSafe field representative performing the upgrade on site versus having to send it back to us to do the radio remote upgrade. So just to let everybody know if you don't purchase it with this originally that we can do that field upgrade for you and you'll pay for the rep to come and do it on site at your facility uh, and it won't take that long to get done. The next RSA we're going to operate is the RSO, or correction, the RSA uh, 51 for the RL. Now, we haven't got it set up yet, so I'm going to do this, and I want to make sure you can see this on Brian's camera now. I'm going to turn this on, and it says 0.5 strokes, 0.5 strokes, 0.5, so there's nothing set in there. Our label says we have to set 8 and 8, and a, or 1 cycle, and T1, T2 at 8. So one cycle means one stroke, and then eight means eight, uh, um, 
seconds that it's going to run. T1 and T2 are tell the timer on the motor how long it's got to run in each direction for complete travel. We do work to put travel stops on the motors on most applications so that we're going to have, if we have something where we have we had a physical limit, we're not going to damage the switch here. So let's now set this to 8. And the nice thing about this is I can go backwards if I overshoot the time to get it right back to where I want it. And then one cycle. Now if I turn this off, it should remember the numbers. And come right back up with the numbers that I just set in it. So those are all there. This is the AR functionality right here. And I want to say I need AR on for close only. So I'm going to cycle this over to close. Then I'm going to hold it down for five seconds. Get my finger out of the way so you can see it. Okay. And set that like right there. Oops. Why did it go to trip? Let me get back up to here. There it's green. Okay, AR. There we go. Now it's set for the for the, uh, for the for the close. If I turn it off again, and I've got AR set, it's going to wake up and it's going to want me to confirm AR here. So I can just push AR right there and say yes, this is what I want for it to be in close. Okay, and now we're ready to operate this. Now we're going to operate our radio remote, powered on. Now it's paired, and now I can operate it with the radio remote. So now, remember we had to label things because of older breakers like a GEAK or a K-line where we're going to, when we pull it down on one stroke it may charge and close. So the nomenclature is charge close and I just push this once. I don't have to hold it down or anything. It's going to now tell it to operate. Okay, so we've got our spring charged in here, and now we're going to hit our close, and you're going to hold the button down until you hear the breaker close, and then you're going to release it. Now for the trip. Okay, and so that's the operation of the RSO 3D M18. The system, I'm going to put it back to off for the AR, just for us, for in shop, real quick. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Again, you can call us at 1-877-472-3389 or email us at info at cbsarcsafe.com if you've got questions. So and the other thing I need to point out is we are offering um, trade-ins. Is that correct? For the, for the older RSOs. So give us a call for those. If you've got some of the old ones and you want to upgrade to these, you know, we're going to take the old ones back from you and get these out to you. So give us a call about that. Let me turn this one off now and turn that off. Now I'm going to move this out of the way and just set it on the ground. I'm going to move the RSO4 over here for the next demonstration. That should be just about right for this. We're going to turn this on, okay, and you can see, is that, that look good, Brian? All right, so we've got our install value set, we have our remove value set, it's in the auto mode. So again, remember, when we work to design all these things and features into stuff, it's because we have to replicate what a human being has to do in racking or switching a circuit breaker, and even in the um, RSO4, we have to deal with the fact that we may have uh, auxiliary inputs where you have an interlock you have to defeat or the interlock has to automatically retract. So there is AR functionality with this also. So again, when it depends upon your breaker type, the information is going to be in the manual for the specific breaker type and which AR function you may or may not need for that if you have anything. So things like a master pack breaker where you have a push button you've got to push in between beginning the racking process and when you get it to test and you got to push it again to be able to get it to disconnect. 
that's where you're going to use that aux in and the AR features to be able to operate this. It's not going to be something we're going to do today with the Wave Pro, but you can see like a newer breaker, like a Emacs 2 generation thing or something else like that. This is a functionality that's required for that type of breaker. So understand you may not need all the functionality built into this, but it's there because somebody does need it. Okay? So that's just one of the things to understand right there. We've got the, our value set. I'm going to turn this on. It shows that it's paired. I'm going to step back over here and we're just going to hit the remove button. And now the blue light alarm's on there to tell you that the system has completed the operation. I hit the stop button, the blue light goes out. And I'm going to say one more time, uh, you can call us at 877-472-3389 or email us at info at cbsarcsafe.com. I'm going to install the breaker now. And if you got questions, we'll open it up right after this for people to ask questions. So we're going to hit the install button now. See, make sure that that's, there we go. Let me check something here. There we go, now we're back. So now we're to install. And that's the installation process right there. What happened is when it came out, it got just past the end of the racking mechanism, so I just had to nudge it to get back to where it would start the racking process. Again, we're open for questions now. Uh, Kyle, let me know if anybody has any. Okay, so just to mention this, all of these RSOs are backwards compatible with all of the remote switch actuators we've produced over the last 14 years. So if you get one of these and say you got a first generation RSA 1 from 19, or correction, from uh, 2008, I can use an RSO 1AR with it. Okay, I can use this with anything made from the beginning of the time that we started to make stuff up with today. So. Backwards compatibility was a mandatory thing for us where people aren't going to have to replace their old actuators unless they broke them with anything new to replace them. They'll be able to use this and keep operating because we understand you have to be able to get your stuff taken care of and you don't need downtime trying to order new stuff that you don't need. So again, the ease in operation with the battery, let me just pull one of these out real quick. Just pinch the two red toggles right there and then slide it in, seat it, and it's set to go. Again, one 877 or info at cbsarcsafe.com. Oh, one of the other nice things on the Milwaukee batteries I meant to mention is we can check the battery just by pushing the little button here. Now, we recommend that you operate these with 50% or more battery charge. So 
the, the nice little feature there on these styles of batteries is you've got a battery indicator right there. And it's going to be a pure 24 volts coming out of there at all times, which is great for the way this system operates. And I had to recently, uh, back in uh, April, May time frame, go over to Saudi Arabia and train at a uh, Aramco facility. And they'd ordered a bunch of our RSKs, which use the Milwaukee batteries. And because it taken four or five months for everything to get there and get set up and get delivered and everything else, the batteries are all dead. I plug them in, 15 minutes later, my first battery's at 50% charge, and I can start using it to train people to use the RSKs. In 30 minutes, the batteries we were using were fully charged. If you're using a larger battery, it may take 45 minutes to an hour to charge, but they're usually very quick to, to recover and to get up. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is the same. My, my son's got uh, the impact driver. I've got a small uh, drill driver. He's got another one, and it's the same battery that you would buy, whether it's at Home Depot, Amazon, Lowe's, or anything like that. So it's compatible, you know. Now, the thing is, if you're missing batteries at work, you have to know who's got Milwaukee tools at home in case something walked off. But that's the one thing. Make sure you know where your batteries are at. And again, one eight seven seven four seven two three three eight nine or info at cbsarcsafe.com. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in today. Please let us know if you have any questions, and have a great day. Thank you.